Hello and welcome back to another video. So quite a few people have been asking me recently how I simulate the film look in a few of the videos that I've been putting up. So today I thought I'd take the opportunity to walk through my colour grading workflow in DaVinci Resolve. So first things first, it's probably worth mentioning that the film look is a very broad term and although colour grading does make up a big part of that process, it is only one component and there are definitely a number of other things that define how filmic your image looks such as exposure, lighting, and of course, your subject matter. My workflow definitely isn't perfect, but in this video I'll show you a few of the techniques that I've picked up over time that have helped me simulate some of those key characteristics of 16mm film. Okay, bye. So, in order to make my workflow as efficient as possible, I work using power grades in Resolve. For anyone that doesn't know what a power grade is, it essentially allows you to apply and customize an entire node tree with predefined settings to your image, including basic adjustments, color grading, effects, sharpening, and much, much more. I found this to be much better than just applying a lot, and it means that I can apply the look to multiple clips and then make small adjustments to each image to achieve the look I want. For anyone that's looking to download my own custom power grade, which includes a number of added features, as well as my own film LUT, I've provided a link below to the one I've built for myself and you can pick this up for a very small fee. The power grade includes a fully customizable node tree with all of my custom color panel settings which I tweak so that they can be applied to broadly any scene and there's also a separate power grade for use with other cameras and I'll show you how to make it apply for your camera with a few minor adjustments. I'll first run through how to import and apply my custom power grade to your footage and I'll then take you through how to build a basic film look power grade in Resolve. So if you've chosen to download the power grade, you'll want to import it into Resolve and navigate over to the color panel tab. The power grade pack can be imported by right clicking on the gallery section and clicking import. You'll want to select both of the DPX files in the folder that was downloaded. It will then show up in the gallery section and you'll simply be able to apply it to your footage. So the log power grade was built out specifically for the BMPCC and since this footage was shot on that camera I'll apply the log power grade now. So the clip looks a little bit odd at the moment but that's just because the correct nodes need to be activated and I'll walk you through that now. So the first two nodes are for white balancing your footage. Since this is a daylight scene I'll activate the daylight node and then I'll move over and activate the exposure node just to bring some contrast back into the image. I've programmed this to add in a medium amount of contrast, which generally works well for most daylight scenes, but of course you can refer to your waveforms in the bottom right and amend the wheels according to your correct exposure. The next node here is the halation node. This is definitely a key part of the film simulation process and so I've activated it by default, but of course you can turn it off if needed. The skin tone node helps to correct slightly oversaturated skin tones, usually if white balance has been set incorrectly in camera. And the next node is the subtractive colour node. So this essentially increases the density of the most saturated colours in your image, and it's a big part of building rich film-like colours in your footage. I'll apply that now and hopefully you'll be able to see that the blues in the image take on a much richer tone. I'll also apply the vignette node and I'll leave the curve node on which I built out mainly just to create a smoother highlight roll off since harsh highlights are usually a really big indicator that something was shot with a digital camera. The bloom node is used to replicate the look of a cine bloom filter and this adds a soft glow to the highlights and takes out some of the contrast from the sharpest parts of the image. I'll leave this on for this particular clip because I think it works really well with the sky. The blur node takes away some of the edge detail from the image, which again is a big part of the film look. And I've added a sharpening node with some masking after because I found that adding this after the blur node works really well, especially with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, since there isn't any sharpening applied in camera. The CST node and the first LUT node are turned on when applying the power grade, and the last thing to do is just apply my custom LUT, which adds a pop to the image and finishes off the grade really nicely. So I'll quickly show you a before and here is the after. I think this footage looks great and now we'll move on to the tungsten scene. 
So this next piece of footage was shot in the London Underground where the lighting is much cooler than the last scene. So just like the last one, I'll apply the log power grade. And instead of applying the daylight white balance, I'll apply the tungsten white balance. I'll activate the exposure node. I'll activate the subtractive color node. And I'll also activate the vignette node. So straight away, I think that looks great. If I zoom into 75% on the lights here and deactivate the halation node, you can really see what that halation node does for the image. It really helps to sell that 16mm film look. The last thing to do is just apply my custom LUT again. And as you can see, the footage looks really cinematic and definitely very film like. So now I'll show you how to use the sRGB power grade with your own camera. Here we've got some footage from the Lumix GX85 or GX80, depending on where you're from. I shot this in the natural picture profile and I'll start by applying the sRGB power grade to the image. All you need to do is make two quick changes to make the power grade work with your camera. So first you need to open up the color space transform by selecting the node and then navigating to OpenFX in the top right. And you'll need to amend the input color space and the input gamma to the correct picture profile for your camera. So the Lumix GX80 operates with an sRGB picture profile so I'll leave this as is for now. If you go through, you can see there's a number of different picture profiles and you'll just need to pick the correct one for your camera. Next, you'll need to open up the halation node by right clicking and clicking show compound node. There's two halation options, low and normal, and you'll need to make the amendment for both types if you want to use both, but the workflow will be the same for each one. So you'll need to enter the compound node by clicking show compound node again. And in the first node, you'll need to open up the OpenFX tab in the top right again and input the correct input gamma for your camera. So again, the Lumix is sRGB, but you'll be able to pick from multiple picture profiles. And then you'll also need to navigate to the last node, open the OpenFX tab again and amend the output gamma to the correct picture profile for your camera again. And now you're all set up. So since this was shot indoors, I'll activate the tungsten node, I'll activate the exposure node, and I'll increase my gain slightly to correct my exposure. I'll activate the subtractive color node to deepen the oranges from the table and the green on the wall. I'll also then activate the vignette node. I'll activate the sharpening node. And lastly, I'll activate my LUT node to bring everything together. So here's a before and here's the after. So in terms of building out a basic power grade yourself you'll need to start by creating seven nodes in the color panel and you'll need to label each node in line with how I've set them up here. So the first being white balance, halation, curves, blur, sharpening, CST and LUT. So we'll start by applying the color space transform. You'll need to open up the OpenFX tab in the top right and apply the color space transform to the CST node. You'll then need to change the input color space for the correct camera profile. Mine is the Blackmagic Design Film Gen 1. And then you'll need to change the output gamma to Arri Log C. So now that we're in the Arri Log C color space, we can then apply the free to use Ari Alexa to Rec 709 LUT in Resolve. Next we'll build out the halation node. This is a technique that I picked up from Rack Productions. I've left a link in the description below so definitely check out their work. We'll start by adding a serial node and then create a compound node. You'll need to enter the compound node and we will create a layer node, select the layer mixer and change the composite mode to add and we'll then add another serial node to that. So now what you'll need to do is apply a color space transform to the first node and a color space transform to the last node. You'll then need to select the first node again and change the input gamma to your camera profile. 
and you'll then need to choose linear as the output gamma. You'll then need to select the last node and change the input gamma to linear and the output gamma again to your camera profile. We can now create the halation by selecting the bottom node, going to the curves panel and lowering the curve down to the bottom, selecting a mark around about there and then raising the curve up to around about there. You can play around with this, it really depends on how strong you want the halation to be, but I leave mine around about there usually. You'll then be able to move over to the blur tab and you'll need to unselect this marker in the left hand side and then you can raise your bars to create the desired halation effect. I tend to find that the sense from the BMPCC creates quite a lot of halation naturally so I tend to be fairly moderate in my application of this. But I think for now that will work just fine. So if we exit the halation node and we zoom in to 75%, if we deactivate and then activate, you can really see how strong that halation can be. If we then move over to our white balance node, this is where we can change our white balance as well as our exposure. I'll start by bringing the lift down to bring some contrast into the image as well as my gain and then I will adjust my gamma slightly towards the warmer side to bring those warm tones back into the image. I tend to like a bit of magenta in the highlights so I will add a bit of magenta to the gain and then we'll move over to our curve section where we'll create a basic S curve Next we'll apply the Gaussian Blur effect in the OpenFX tab to the Blur node. The effect is pretty strong straight away so we'll bring the horizontal strength as well as the vertical strength down to around about 0.2 and then we'll increase the global blend so that we have a natural look to the image. Around about 0.8 works pretty well for me. So now we'll add some sharpening by selecting the sharpening node and changing blur to sharpen. As I mentioned before, the Blackmagic can take a bit more sharpening than regular cameras since there's no sharpening applied in camera. So I tend to bring this down to around about 0.47. And straight away I think that image looks pretty film-like. I'll show you a before and here is an after. So obviously grain makes up a big part of the film emulation process. If you're using the studio version of Resolve, you can use the built-in grain feature, but if you're using the free version of Resolve, you'll need to download a grain overlay. And I've included a link to a free grain pack that you can download from the description below. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this useful, but of course, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.